Hello, in this video we're going to talk about Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya is the fourth of the Yamas, and I think that this is a commonly misunderstood topic, um, typically because it's described as celibacy, which for those of us from the Western world, it sounds kind of extreme, and we, we tend to gloss over it and even sometimes disregard it because it's not very practical or pragmatic in the sense that it's conveyed. Another way that Brahmacharya could be described is that of walking the path of Brahman, which is another concept that we don't really comprehend coming from Western world. And if I were to describe that in any way, I guess it would be to walk um, with an ideal of divinity divinity um, in, in values and in, um, the way we carry ourselves and the way that we um, bring empathy and compassion and, and those aspects into all that we do. But I think for our, um, for our purposes that it might be easier to describe brahmacharya as moderation. Now, as we've already discussed in previous videos, there is a wide range of, uh, of spectrum for all of these topics, and they apply to all of us differently, depending on our upbringing, depending on our backgrounds, depending on our experience, uh, history, and practice of yoga. But moderation is something that is, is more easily graspable. graspable. Part of the problem with all esoteric principles is that devoid of context, um, devoid of the ability to place them um, within a topic of understanding, they, are, they tend to be taught in terms of um, very literal value. We see this play out a lot in a lot of the ancient religious texts where people conveying the meaning of these texts are not so adequate at placing them within context. And so that taken out of context, the, the meanings are taken to far extremes. Now, sometimes I have an inside joke with myself that we see fundamentalism and we see extremism in some yogic concepts such as ahimsa, particularly in regards to food and the environment. Both were the subjects to be passionate about, but in the, in the same, in the same uh, breath, we very seldom see fundamentalist brahmacharyans. But all jokes aside, celibacy is a little bit extreme, and the majority of us have relationships. We live in the world, or we want relationships, and it's not practical, desirable um, to, to pursue celibacy. There's just, it's not a, it's not an ideal that we should strive for. But moderation, on the other hand, can have a lot of implications on how we live our lives and how we treat others. For example, it can take a lot of time, effort, and energy to pursue relationships with other people. And now when those relationships are not ideal for us, um, perhaps we seek them out for simply sexual reasons or we seek them out for companionship or whatever reason that we seek them out for. If they're not ideal for us, yet we spend an inordinate amount of time pursuing those relationships, we are essentially not providing the time or the energy that we could allow ourselves to spend on more important spiritual endeavors, more important practices, things that are more inherently important to us. Essentially, if you are spending your time and your energy on the people who are not right for you, then you're not allowing the time and the space for the people who are right for you to enter into your life. As sort of another aspect of this topic, um, there's the idea of energetic moderation. So things that you're spending your time and energy on that could be better spent on other things 
this this scope is much broader than than sexuality. Um, one thing that comes to mind is uh, internet activism. There is a a large degree of time and effort spent on getting people to agree with you or getting people to agree with us um, over the social media platforms. This, this relates to politics, this relates to um, the pandemic, this relates to a whole plethora of topics. And it's not that it's not that it's not a worthy cause to be heard or to be understood or to have your side of the argument or the discussion um, to be valued. But, but what I see occurring in my own participation in it, what I see occurring generally um, with these topics is that there is a large degree of argument, of blaming, and of condescension. And I don't believe that any of these things is going to convince anybody to take your side of the story if they don't already. So what's happening is that people, all of us, we spend a lot of time saying something that we believe to be true and feeling good about ourselves because of all the likes and the accolades that our comment or our post receives. And at the same time, disenfranchising people who don't already agree with us. So the result is that um, nothing positive comes of this. People who agree with you already agree with you. People who disagree with you don't change their minds or their attitudes. But the process itself has created a lot of friction and a lot of negative energy. Energy that, of course, could have been spent doing much better and more positive things. What type of things? Well, basically just relationships, you know. When you're, when you're spending your time arguing with people, um, quite often strangers, then this is taking away from valuable time and energy that you could be making your relationships better, be making your relationship with yourself better, be making your relationship with your practice better. So it all comes down to moderation of energy, mindfulness of how you spend the energy and awareness of how that energy is having an effect on the world and on yourself. Brahmacharya.